Hello and welcome to Ula Tea Leaf Readings. My name is Lenore and tonight I'm going to be reading your tea leaves. This is a horoscope for Libra. If Libra is your solar, lunar, ascendant slash rising sign, then this is a message for you. All right, let's get started. And so tonight, this is a bonus reading for Libra and our card is the Knight of Swords. Let's go ahead and see what these tea leaves have to say. And so if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. And it's free to subscribe. All right, all right. So I want to start here. We have a person who is kind of standing next to a fish. It looks like they've caught this fish, okay? Um, and I also see that we have, it almost looks like a thought bubble. It is full, right? So I do feel like there is a sense of, and we have that Knight of Swords, so this makes sense to me. It feels like you have been really working on, like, tweaking some kind of, um, I don't know, maybe it was some kind of idea you had within your work, maybe you started a little business, um, you know, invested money or something or, or, you know, started some kind of like side hustle type of deal, but you have been really brainstorming, figuring it out, planning and executing all, you know, really all of it from top to bottom. And so I see that we have the fish and the fish. When we catch the fish, we have abundance, right? We have our next meal. We are, um, you know, very blessed to be able to eat and so for me when I see the fish show up in the in the tea leaves I know okay so this is some kind of financial abundance or resources and so that tells me that you're doing pretty well with the thing that you have begun now I wonder if this is some kind of it feels like an intellectual pursuit but it doesn't have to be Right. But I do feel like you have, I mean, just researched and studied and, um, you know, uh, you've been working up late working on this thing. And, um, and I just, I feel like it just, it's almost like you are being led by your intuition about it. Um, obviously you're using your knowledge and, and ability to, um, you know, the logical mind, <laughs> uh, but there's also a lot of creativity here as well. And, um, and so I think this is why it's all kind of working out for you. And, um, if this has not come to pass yet, it makes me think that maybe you are in the beginning stages. You are thinking, Hey, I'd like to, you know, start doing this thing. Maybe you saw, I mean, maybe you saw like a YouTube video about it. Maybe, um, it's something that somebody else, you know, is doing, or, um, you know, it's something you read about, or maybe you dreamt about, I don't know, but it came from somewhere and, um, you have put your all into it. So, uh, yes, I feel like this is a time where there is great prosperity and we have used that sword energy to get there. Okay. And up here, I'm seeing we have a hand with a flower right there. So this is, I immediately I'm thinking this is like a gift from the universe. This is like a sweet little, um, something from the universe. They are looking at you. I'm, I was thinking looking down at you, but it, you know, it is all in everything. Everything is everything. Right. And, 
Um, and so this is such a blessing. I feel that you are in a place of great gratitude, but also in awe, you know, kind of like you can't really fully believe it. Um, but you know, do please do believe it because you have done this, but you know, you've also had a little bit of help from the divine thing that, um, sometimes smiles upon us, right? So that is not too shabby. Now we have this great big wave. You can see kind of spiraling right there. And let's see, what is in the middle? We have the head of a dog or a wolf right here. You can see. Okay, so we have the E. And for some reason, the name Jin keeps kind of coming through to me. Jin. Oh, and I'm looking at this too. It looks like a wave, but it also looks like another, maybe another wolf right here and a child, a baby, a little pup. Okay, so... Yeah. Okay, so it almost feels like, and we have people up here, or I mean down here. They're down here. I was looking up here too. <laughs> I mean down here though. We have people down here who are like raising their hands. So I almost kind of feel like you have your little family unit, right? Or you are in the process of kind of getting closer with somebody or maybe more serious. Maybe you're going to be getting married or having a child or, you know, whatever it is. But I feel like there are outside forces that are kind of really trying to get involved, trying to kind of cause some, some, you know, problems within this relationship. I don't know why, but it just seems like they have too much to say about something they don't know anything about. Now you, on the other hand, you are so focused. You are just focused on living your life, being with the people you love, um, you know, taking care of yours, basking in the glory of, you know, and just this noise. There's like this noise going on around. And I just feel like it's like, um, it could be family, but it almost feels like I get this, this feeling of, uh, like having an old life, right? Like having, um, like maybe you live somewhere else or you are into other things and you kind of, you know, I don't know, evolved as a person, got into some other, other kind of living. Maybe you just focused on work and building your business and having a family. And it's just kind of this like haters, you know? And bringing up old stuff, trying to like, you know, like uh, th put something into the machinery to get it to stop working. And I just don't think you're buying into it. This seems like a strong family unit here. Um, and so, you know, I good on you for kind of just staying focused. Um, and you know, ultimately, and I know you're a Libra, you're not a petty person, but guess what? I kind of am. <laughs> I kind of am. Um, so, you know, the best, the best kind of, and it's not even revenge. It's just kind of like the best little, um, showing out we can do is doing well in our life. Now, I don't mean financially, although that's kind of, you know, that's nice to, to be able to pay the bills and all that. But I just mean finding yourself in a place of ease, finding yourself in a life that feels balanced, living in a life that you want to be in. People that focus on what other people are doing, how they're living, getting involved, bringing up ancient history, these people are not happy in their life. These are people that, you know, they don't know yet. Hopefully one day they will. Um, they don't know yet how to do the self work. They don't know how to kind of quiet that 
disharmony and focus on healing themselves. So what do we do when this happens? We say, God bless you, bless your soul, bless your heart. I hope the best for you. You know, uh, I'm not interested. <laughs> I'm not interested in having you around in my life anymore. Um, I am, you know, uh, getting off of social media. I'm blocking these people. Whatever you have to do, right? Um, not allowing them access to you or yours. And that's okay. You know, as a Libra, that might feel like a really difficult thing to do because you're a person that looks for the best in people. You have um, such a heart of gold. You are so empathetic and, and loving that even the worst behavior, you think, well, you know, um, maybe they're hurting and maybe if I can be of a support or I can just be kind, um, not engage in it, maybe they will change. Yeah. And maybe that's true, but it's also not your responsibility to fix people or allow them space in your life to get better, you know, especially if they are causing problems for you. And that's just what it is, okay? You might disagree with me about that, but I'm a firm believer in um, cutting out the energies that do not align with your vision of how you want your life to be, okay? We don't owe anybody anything, especially our time, especially our vital energies. And especially if you have kids or grandkids or whatever, they don't need to be around that kind of nonsense period, you know? And so, um, I do, I feel like this is a time where it's not even a question anymore. You are, you are not interested in this kind of lifestyle. Um, these dramas, these ordeal, unnecessary ordeals. Um, it's just, it's not where it's at anymore. <laughs> it's just not not the vibe, right? Okay, let's see. So I keep seeing E's. We have an E here. We have an E here. And I almost I just feel like it's a name. It's being repeated. I kind of almost feel like this, uh, this situation is like some kind of parent or somebody in your family who maybe like an aunt or an uncle, but they have this real kind of dark lunar energy. Um, it's not... Now, usually I'm very positive about the lunar energy. I'm, you know, quite a devotee of the moon and, and the goddess. But um, this one, it just is the, it's a, del this person is almost delusional, I think. Um, controlling and narcissistic. And I feel like this is maybe why it's been so hard for you to kind of um, cut them off or, or limit, you know, kind of limit their access to you. But I do see a person running away here. Okay. Um, you can see the head, the arms, and the kind of foot here running, just get away, getting away. And And I feel like that's kind of, you know, this seems like in, if you know anything about people who are narcissistic, I mean, truly narcissistic, I'm not talking about, you know, we just call everybody narcissists for, you know, whatever they behave poorly or they're self-involved or, you know, whatever it is. That's no, I'm talking about somebody who is, um, pathologic, right? Somebody who has no self-awareness, who, um, Maybe it's predatory, abusive, these kinds of things. They are truly a narcissist. And 
Um, and it just, when you try to leave somebody like that, especially if it's like, um, not just in a relationship, romantic relationship, but somebody who raised you or who was part of your upbringing or whatever, they will absolutely go to the ends of the world to, um, you know, make your life hard, you know, and also play the victim in the situation. And, um, and so, you know, I feel like there's been a sense of really having to fortify yourself emotionally and mentally. But I think this is so necessary. And I really, I do feel like having children or having like grandchildren, um, this has been the deciding factor for you. Uh, because I feel like it's like you think back on how your childhood was and it almost like your the way that you felt was always um, such a low, low priority to how these other people in your life felt. If they were upset, everybody knew it. If you were upset, you were kind of just told, get over it. You know, you're being, you're being silly. Um, you're being ridiculous. And... Um, and having to live under the oppression of that for year after year after year, uh, it's hard. It's, it is, it's very hard to know yourself. It's hard to form, um, you know, your identity in a way that that's healthy and functional, right? Um, you know, you go through life trying to adapt to situations and people's moods and, and, um, maybe trying to remain unseen and kind of undetected, not because, you know, you're doing anything sly, but because you don't want to make any ripples. You don't want to, um, anybody to focus on you because you might then draw in negative attention or, or, you know, be blamed or whatever, yelled at or whatever it is. And so, um, in this time of kind of putting up these boundaries, walking away, um, you know, I think a lot of this is, is, is a act of devotion to the children of your life. Because you don't want them to be raised around this kind of energy. You don't want them to think that this is normal behavior, you know. Um, and also, you don't want to continue this cycle. And it is abuse. It is abuse to be treated this way. And so, I feel that, um, you know, you've been doing some real intense work. Now, this maybe was years ago, but this is something that is so core to your experience that it really is, um, you know, something important to you. I think that you could be somebody who's like a counselor, an advocate, or, um, you know, a social worker, or, or whatever it is, you know, maybe not in a formal capacity, but in some way you are helping people. Um, especially people that maybe are in situations that are, um, rough, you know, like abusive situations. So, um, you know, I feel, I just feel a great, it's like a great sense of, uh, healing of, um, of fortifying, of becoming, of becoming something, you know, um, getting that space in your life where you are becoming who you are, knowing what you like, what, what you think about things, not what other people around you think, not what is easy to just agree with. And, oh, I don't have an opinion because if I do and it's not the same as this person or these people in my life, um, they're really going to come down on me. They're really going to, um, you know, harass me about it. But now you have the space to kind of explore. How do I feel about this? Do I even feel anything? Maybe I don't. Maybe it's not important to me. Maybe what's important to them is not important to me. And so this is kind of a beautiful rebirth here. 
you know, and it's not easy and it's hard and it's emotional. Um, definitely, but it is most necessary to your survival, not only survival, but for you to flourish and for you to give the gift of, uh, not having to grow up like this to the kids that are in your life, in your family. You know, I, we live in a time where things have changed so quickly with technology, with the dissemination of information, access to information, um, our understanding of, you know, mental health and, uh, family dynamics, relationship dynamics. And, you know, people kind of, I think are cynical to some degree. Um, hopefully, uh, some of the stigma around things is lessening, but I also feel like people, um, almost kind of are cynical about, um, people's experiences or their own experience. And, um, this idea that, oh, now everybody has mental health problems or everybody's been mistreated or whatever it is, you know, um, and to me though, I look at this world that we're in. I look at these conversations more and more people are having all over the place. And it's, to me, a beautiful time of recognizing that we don't have to put up with being treated these ways. We don't have, we know, we are learning more and more that um, there is a way out. And even if you are the person who has behaviors that, you know, maybe borderline on, um, I'm not going to say abusive exactly, but maybe, yeah, you don't hold your um, anger well. Maybe you are um, somebody that is very, you rage or, um, you know, you don't know how to share your feelings or you're very kind of emotionally unavailable or you're somebody who's kind of dissociating from life a lot and finding distractions and not you know, being able to be close to the people that care about you, whatever it is, right? We, we all, it's easy for us to talk about somebody else and like what they're doing to us. And yeah, this, this stuff does happen and it's important to talk about it. Um, but you know, we also have things, we all have things. And, um, I think this is an important time in human history because it is a turning point. We all kind of are learning about this stuff together. And, um, and it can feel like a curse, definitely. Um, but I, I look at it as a blessing because it is empowering us. It's empowering us to walk away from this kind of stuff. It's empowering us to find help. It's empowering us to heal ourselves, to, to, um, end these cycles within our families, within our communities. And so, you know, it might not feel like a big deal to you, maybe a big deal, but it might not feel as profound. You know, sometimes it's just like, well, I've come to a point where, um, so-and-so comes every, you know, every holiday and they're berating people and belittling people and talking about things that are, um, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. We just don't talk about them anymore. We shouldn't talk about them anyways, you know, racism or, or, um, bigotry or whatever it is that is happening. And, um, and now I know I have to cut them out of my life. We can't have them around, um, you know, whatever. And that might just feel like, okay, this is something that happens with people and families and, you know, but I want you to stop and think about this is, I mean, this is a big thing. It's a big thing. You are making a decision that is going to be lasting in your family line, in your, um, you know, your shared community here. And, you know, I, you might think, well, that's harsh. We shouldn't just like, you know, kind of, um, push people out, but you know, ultimately it is part of sometimes anyways, it is part of 
healing. It is part of protecting those we love, those who will come later, our children, their children, and so on. And so this work is profound. This is profound work. And so I want you to look at what you have done in your life. And I want you to, to thank yourself. I want you to, um, you know, really recognize recognize how difficult this can be so many so many of us just put up with stuff you know we just put up oh you know that's just how they are they're our uncle or they're our you know mother or whoever and we'll just you know we have to just kind of accept it for what it is no we don't no we don't and we won't for our children and that's, that is hard work. It is. So I congratulate you as a human being, <laughs> you know, and I, and I tell you, I love you. I do because it's, it is, um, you know, it's, it's something that can feel very upsetting. Definitely it can. So let's take a look. We have an M and we have a four. We have an M and a four. Or we have a Z and an S. <laughs> we also have an oil lamp, which is kind of like if you remember the story of like the genie or the djinn, and you rub the oil lamp and they come out and they give you three wishes. So I look at this and I think there will be three opportunities for you coming up. I'm looking. Yes, we have, it looks like Maybe like a little turnip or a carrot. Um, so yeah, to make some resources in your in your life here, in some to some degree, right? Um, or within some sphere of your life. But I do feel like it could be financial. It could be like work related. I think that you know this maybe is a time of advancement for you, or the ability to kind of go into something where. Um, you're making some money there and that's well, and I just remember, yeah, at the beginning of the reading, we were talking about your business. So yeah, this makes sense. But three things, there will be three distinct opportunities and they will feel like blessings because they are okay. And then we have a little cat here and the cat to me says, just remember that even if the choices you're making to protect yourself, uh, make people mad. It is for you. It doesn't matter what anybody else has to say. Take the, take the posture of a cat <laughs> and remember you're an independent being, you're autonomous, right? Um, and you know, you're going to have to make, you make decisions that will better support the life that you want. Okay. Cats are all about that. They don't care. They don't care if you say no, they don't care. <laughs> they don't care if you want, you're calling them, you want them to come sit so you can cuddle. They're not doing it on anybody else's time, but their own. So, you know, sometimes you got to act like the cat. You have to do what you need to do. Okay. When you need to eat, you eat. When you need to sleep, you sleep. When you want love, you go and you ask for love, right? But you also, it's just a sense of really being able to take care of yourself and to be okay with being this kind of real um, individually mind person, minded, mind, mind, individually minded person. <laughs> Can you tell this is the last reading of the night? It is after midnight. Yes, and I'm getting a little sleepy. All right, so we have the wild bohemian affirmation cards, and these are the fire element. I'm going to go ahead and just flip through here. I'm going to stop where it feels right. It says, I am seer. Deeply relax into the limitless 
potential of your totality to receive clear destiny visions. It's a lot. (laughs) But basically, right? You have the ability to see which way to go. You have the ability to see those opportunities. You are perceptive. You are um, psychically inclined. You have good intuition. And so let it be. All right, Libra. I'm going to go ahead and tell you I love you because I do. And I thank you so much for spending this time with me. It's always such an honor. And if you would be so kind as to like the video, it really does help the channel. And if you have not subscribed yet, please think about doing that. You can hit the little bell. It'll let you know when the next readings are coming out. It's free to subscribe. And we've just hit 40K subscribers. So... I want to thank each and every one of you. I could not do any of this without you. And um, if you want to leave a comment, please do. I'd love to hear from you. So with that, I will say good night. I'm going straight to bed. And um, I hope you have a wonderful morning, day, evening. Maybe you're going to bed too. (laughs) Um, Sweet dreams if that's the case. And we will talk in just a couple days. Good night.